When writing C++ code, one of the first lines often includes the command using namespace std. But many struggle to explain its significance during interviews. Hello everyone, welcome to another informative video from IntelliPad. Today we'll cover everything you need to know about namespace in C++, ensuring you are well prepared for interview questions on this topic. Let's look at our agenda that we have for this session. Firstly, we'll understand what is namespace, exploring the std namespace, learning various ways to use namespaces, and finally understanding nested namespaces and creating a custom namespace in a hands-on session. Let's dive into our first topic, what is a namespace? But before we begin, please make sure to enable the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for regular updates coming from our IntelliPad YouTube channel. Namespace is like a container that holds a set of identifiers such as variables, functions and classes. It prevents naming conflicts between different parts of a program. Let me break this formal definition into simpler words. When you create a program, you declare various functions and variables, right? Those variables, functions or classes that you define in your program are termed as identifiers. Now imagine what if all the identifiers are not assigned a unique address in the memory space. That will create chaos in your program, right? This is where the concept of namespace comes into play. Namespace makes sure that all the identifiers have their unique address. On the other hand, std is basically a collection of classes, functions and objects that are provided as part of the C++ standard library. So in the most basic sense, we are trying to have unique address for all the identifiers by including the namespace into our program. Besides this, there is one more application of namespace. For instance, imagine you named a variable named count in one part of your code and another variable named count in a different part of your code. Now the compiler has no way of knowing which count variable you are referring to in your code. At this point, namespace comes into help. They store identifiers with the same name in different namespace areas, removing the confusion for the compiler. Now let's have a quick overview on namespace std. The std namespace is one of the most commonly used namespace in C++. Here, std stands for standard, so std namespace at its core is standard namespace. This standard namespace is a collection of classes, functions and objects provided as part of the C++ standard library. So when you encounter code like std cout, std in, std string and so on, the std part refers to the standard namespace. Now we know what a namespace is how to write it and what namespace std is. Now let me show you two different ways of using namespace. The first way is to use the using declaration. Using declaration in C++ are similar to creating shortcuts for specific names such as variables or functions from a namespace. They allow you to use those names directly in your code without having to type the namespace's name before them every time. Another way is by using the scope resolution operator. Scope resolution operators are written as two continuous colons. This links the namespace's element with the namespace name. All you have to do is write the namespace name followed by this scope resolution operator and then the namespace element name. As you can see here in example 1, the using namespace is used to declare namespace std and then we are free to use all the elements of std in our code like using cout. On the other hand, in example 2, Cout and ENDL are using scope resolution methods to identify themselves as elements of std namespace. Apart from these simple namespaces, we can also have nested namespaces. The term nested typically refers to something that is placed or contained within something else. A nested namespace allows you to define one namespace inside another namespace. Now, when we are done with all the theoretical stuff and gained enough knowledge on working with namespaces, let's quickly jump onto our ID and see this namespace thing in action. Okay, so we are in our ID. I'm using VS Code. You are free to use whichever ID you are comfortable with. So as you can see, I've already prepared a boilerplate for our program. So let us start with simply printing something. So I'll write C out and let's say XYZ. So as you can see, this is possible only because we have included the namespace std in our program using the using keyword. So let me try to run it and show it to you. We can simply print xyz. So another way of uh, using this namespace 
was using scope resolution. Let me quickly show it to you. We write std followed by the scope resolution and then the word. And the exact same output. Now let's try to create our own namespace. So the syntax of creating a namespace is namespace followed by name of that namespace. I'm naming it as n1 curly braces and then its contents. Uh, let's say int x equals uh, 10. Now in order to use this x, I need to use this namespace. So we'll write using and the name of the namespace preceded by the namespace keyword. Now you can write x and see the output. It printed 10. So if I had another namespace called n2 which also had this x by value 20. So now in order to print this next x I'll have to use another namespace which is namespace n2. So I'll write n2 here and let's try to run this and we got 20. So we can have multiple variables with same name in different namespaces and we can call them using that particular namespace. We are also free to use the scope resolutions here as well. Like now if I want to print the value of x which is present in n1, I'll simply write n1 scope resolution x. Now let's try to run and see if it prints 20 or 10. It prints 10 because I have asked it to get the value from n1 namespace. After that we have also learned about another concept called nested namespaces. So that's basically having a namespace inside another namespace like this. Here I have inserted this namespace 2 inside of namespace n1. So in order to call this n2, we'll have to call it this way, n1 scope resolution, n2 scope resolution x. Now this basically refers to calling x which is inside of n2 which is inside of n1 namespace. Now let's try to run it and see what it prints. And as expected it is printing 20. That's all we have for this session. I hope now you have got a good understanding of what namespace is and how we can create them. Thank you for staying till the end of this video. If you found this informative, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to our IntelliPath YouTube channel to stay updated with more such informative videos. Just a quick info guys, IntelliPath offers a full stack developer course which enable you to learn tech stack from both front end and back end. Through this course, you will gain hands-on experience with the skills and technologies such as SQL, Java, Data Structure, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, Node.js and React under the guidance of industrial professionals. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professionals in successful career transition. You can check out that testimonial on our Achievers channel whose link is given in the description below. Without doubt, this course can set your careers to new height. So visit the course page link given in the description and take the first step towards a career growth with the full stack developer course.